Okay, uh, Jules has mentioned about how um, he's encouraging people to tell stories. This is a lot about, uh, about a story and uh, about how we've incorporated wetlands into our forest management. <clears throat> so, uh, incorporating wetlands into forest management, my talk is structured uh, kind of from the high level down to the get to the operational level. So we start with our land base, some of our inventory work we've done where we've incorporated wetlands, incorporating it into our strategic planning as well as our operational planning, operating plans. Certification is an important part of it and the wetlands, how we've incorporated that and how DU has helped us. A little bit on road construction and uh, a little bit on harvest operations to conclude at the lowest level. So an introduction, Louisiana Pacific, we have an area-based forest management license. Uh, this is Manitoba, uh, Riding Mountain Park. We manage the Duck Mountains, kind of its surrounding area. That's the Porcupine Mountains there. So as an area-based forest management, we're responsible for all planning. And even uh, their spruce products has a sawmill. They cut spruce. Uh, we don't use any spruce, but we do the planning for them. And we're <clears throat> responsible to coordinate that as well. We're uh, an SFI certified land base and have been for a long time. So we are um, required to meet all requirements of SFI certification, and that's a rising bar. And we need to meet, and sometimes we really enjoy when we exceed the uh, SFI expectations. So I'm here to basically give you an example of what the forest industry, somebody who's doing something with wetlands. And it's been a long, this didn't just happen yesterday, this started back in the late 90s, back when Margaret Donnelly worked as our bio regional biologist, and uh, DU's been involved the whole way, but I'll get into that. <clears throat> I'm also here to promote and share information about effective BMPs working in and around wetlands. We don't have an exhaustive, I have some examples. I looked for a map for Canada to just show you where we are. So we're basically, this is the wetlands map from Kew, the wetland density of Canada. We're basically, our license area is in here. We um, have a lot of wetlands. We're not, of course, tundra with uh, tons and tons of wetlands, but we deal with them constantly. So just to let you know, uh, you heard my bio. I received no wetlands training at all during any of my degree, forestry degrees. <laughs> but I benefited greatly from talking into Ducks Unlimited's expertise. They have a variety of staff in a variety of areas, and we've been plugged in with DU from very early on, and we've benefited greatly uh, from having a good relationship and a good, uh, amazing exchange. This, uh, and it's to the point now where I can actually give back a little bit. So uh, on the field guide for the Boreal <coughs> Wetland classes, I was able to help in a small way with that. And again, I'm here to showcase how we've been incorporating wetlands in the last 15, 18 years. Let's look at our land base. Uh, we are boreal plain. Our land base is a mosaic of both uplands and wetlands. And it's a beautiful area to be. We realized it's really unwise to try to either ignore the wetlands or to separate them. You can't take that and have the upland box and the wetland boxes. The wetlands are interspersed and they're interconnected with the uplands. And of course, things we do, can af they affect each other. Let's talk about inventory. So <clears throat> we did a really extensive forest inventory and everybody's got forest inventory. What this slide is showing is there, there's some green and there's some gray and blues, of course, for water. But there's these white spaces <clears throat> and they're basically the non-forested wetlands and most people manage on that you run a 20-year plan and you uh, in forestry we're all trying to do ecosystem based management but when you look at that it kind of gives me a twin that goes well are we really doing ecosystem based management because we're dealing with just part of the ecosystems and I'm getting ahead of myself so real ecosystem based management would be all ecosystems both upland and wetland so, this is the exact same area, by the way. Uh, so this shows the forested uplands are colored. There's the opposite. So we went to the effort and got the wetlands mapped. Now the white space 
is the four step line. It's the total inverse. And so that was expanded. And well, I'd like to make the comment for inventory people, if you map the wetlands, they're more or less permanent. Yes, there's some minor changes, but it's really worth the investment. Uh, if you do an inventory every 10 years, that wetlands mapping is probably good for 30, 40, 50 years, other than minor changes. So it's a, it's a worthwhile investment. So uh, Ducks Unlimited was doing their enhanced wetland classification at the time, and they were kind enough to expand uh, the area they were doing to include our Duck Mountains. So that's the exact same place. Uh, it's a 30 meter raster product. Uh, I included that so people know what it is. As you can see, uh, some areas are really complex for us, for wetlands. You've got three, four, five kind of wetlands in a 150 meter town set. It, it gets complex, and that's one of the challenges of uh, incorporating wetlands. So, talked about just the uplands, just the wetlands. Well, we have now have uh, inventory that's, there is no white space. We've got all the uplands and the wetlands together, and now we can uh, manage them. No more white space. So for our planning, so <clears throat> we want ecosystem-based management, and we started with only forest-based ecosystems, and now realize we should have both, uh, upland ecosystems and wetland, and we're incorporating that into our 20-year forest management plan, and we'll be moving it forward. Um, anybody, so we've got to do a future forest condition 200 years in the future. Does anybody have any uh, wetland succession information? <laughs> The, uh, there's a truism that the reward for good work is more work, and we're stepping in that over and over. Well, let's talk about planning uh, in our operational planning. So uh, this red outline is a harvest, proposed harvest block. The wood hasn't been cut yet. And people have talked <coughs> pardon me, about avoidance. So generally, the larger wetlands we are able to avoid. So there's a great big thicket swamp to the north uh, that got planned out of the block. And here we have a big complex mixed wood swamp. There's a few small islands of upland in there. It's quite a mishmash, but so that's out. And of course, this isn't news to anybody in this room, I'm sure. So let's look at uh, wetlands inside the harvest block. So there's the same block after it's been harvested. Uh, for wetlands inside the block, we really want to maintain the connectivity. So I, I, I drew this blue to you can see how much uh, connectivity. There's some thicket swamps. And uh, part of our challenge, too, is some of this, I added this blue. Those aren't really streams you would see above the ground. You could inventory those, you could LIDAR those, you could fly two centimeter imagery. There's not really water there above ground, but or there is water flowing below ground, which uh, you have to account for. Also, notice how this has changed. There's an open water marsh now. There's beaver activity in here, and this is now gray instead of green as the timber is flooded and the trees are cut by the beaver. So we're trying to maintain the connectivity uh, in this, of, of those thicket swamps. And uh, you'll also notice there's wetlands that we've buffered inside the block. There's lots of little boats. Certification. So I mentioned uh, LP corporately. So all across North America, all our sites are SFI certified. Uh, under the new SFI standard, and there's a new standard every five years, uh, this one has water has always been objective three. Uh, protection, maintenance of water resources, but the definition has been expanded to uh, beyond just water, but also mentions wetlands. So we have to protect the water quality of rivers, streams, lakes, wetlands, and other water bodies through meeting or exceeding best management practices. So right now in Manitoba, there's not a whole lot for best management practices, so one could argue it would be easy to meet or exceed those, but We'll be developing them, applying them, and uh, in July we'll be audited on them. But uh, due to our relationship with DU and our history and our increased knowledge, our capacity to meet this certification requirement is very high and very enhanced. 
uh, some of our projects, of course, are the enhanced wetland classification that came out in 2007, the raster mapping we saw earlier. Um, that's just a shot of the ducks, duck mountains with just the wetlands. So we have a map, we have a field guide, we can go on the ground if in doubt and identify sites. And speakers next, we'll talk about roads. We have an operational guide that's in development and being improved. Okay, let's talk a little bit about road construction. So here's a typical example. We want to access this mature timber, which is I've outlined in red, and it is surrounded by wetlands of all different types. So we have this black line here is an existing uh, haul road to the north, and we want to connect to that rather than build more road. We field scout it. Well, you know, could we go here? Could we go here? Could we punch through there? Uh, we have a field scouting that shows us this is the least worst way to get in. We only have three crossings. <laughs> oh, and that's uh, that imagery is color leaf on in 2008. Now, in 2010, uh, my planner had we got imagery again for a this area to help them with planning. The open water is still open water, but what's significant here is this is all now standing water two years later. So previously, this had just a little bit of standing water. Now this is all flooded. So these are, um, shows the dynamic nature of the swamps and how it, um, one could say they're insidious because they can be dry, they can be full of water, they can change dramatically over a very short amount of time. These uh, three dots represent the three crossings. So there's some very significant fluctuations. So that was 20, we looked at 2008, 2010. In 2012, we didn't fly the whole area. We, it was just clipped just to the cut wood. You notice how uh, there was a buffer everywhere. And in these little bits, it's dryish again. So we have to have crossings that are robust enough to handle these wild fluctuations. So here's that one crossing. This is the initial photo before any work has been done. The hard hats there for scale. The snow's melting and there's a little bit of water. Uh, so they were wanting to cross this in summer and the water happened to be gone. It's not that it's not wet, there's just not standing water there at the time. So we start with putting geotextile down on the bottom. These are temporary crossings and the geotextile is nice because you can when you decommission, you can pick it up and take it away, and any dirt and so on that comes with it makes it very really clean. Although uh, we're debating an improvement right now about taking a log and wrapping it with Jew at the end so the um, excavator can grab it and pull it much easier than trying to grab a, a thin sheet of Jew. So uh, at this shrub swamp crossing, then you put down a culvert, in this case it's a 24 inch plastic, and then you put spruce trees that were cut from the right away parallel to the culvert, and another layer of geo on top, and then fill. The purpose of course of the geo is so all your fill doesn't go in between uh, your spruce trees and plug that. The purpose of the spruce trees and the culvert is to allow water to flow freely from one side to another. And uh, this is uh, one of our certification audits, and they looked at this crossing, and a year later, the crossing is very stable. So you see the fill, the geotextile, and there's the spruce tree top sticking out. So there were some wild fluctuations, but it was a nice, stable crossing. So harvest operations, and Ducks Unlimited has provided us with wetland training for our LP staff, for our, uh, both our permanent staff and our summer student staff. Uh, road contractors and harvest contractors. So there's Chris Smith. You may not see it from the back, but it says Wetlands 101. So Chris has been helping us identify wetlands, and we want our contractors to know that, and uh, our staff to know that, so that we can uh, make the appropriate site-specific decision. Those four uh, young people are summer staff that uh, go out and do pre-harvest surveys and uh, we've kind of expanded our pre-harvest survey system to also, while you're there, is that a shrub swamp, is it, what, what is that that you're walking right beside? 
And there's Mark Cornish uh, walking us through the field guide on site. So uh, it's very nice training. You do an hour or two uh, in the boardroom, and then you go to the field for the rest of the day and work on the keys. Very powerful training tool. So uh, <clears throat> looking at on the harvest side of things, yes, you saw this cut block before from a planning perspective. But uh, from a harvest perspective, we've minimized crossing picket swamps within the block. And so this block was almost split into two. There's a barrier here. We could have crossed here, but we chose not to. Consciously chose not to because we, it just looks like there's a lot of flow there. And we, even if we put a crossing there, it might be high risk. So this block got split into two this way, came this way, and then out to the road. And all this side, the wood got, went that way and down. Also, we buffered all the, um, we talked about this a little bit, but all the wetlands are buffered, and almost all of them have a ring of trees around them. The um, planner, if he puts a, a line on the map, the, our ops techs have to go out and flag to make sure that happens. But a lot of this came about voluntarily from the feller buncher operator saying, you know what, that's a wetland, I'm gonna have a little extra protection, and I'm going to leave a ring of trees even though I don't have to, I have the freedom to do so. And that's where that training uh, really helps. Conclusions. Well, I said conclusions. Actually, we're not concluded. We're not done. But uh, the effort continues. So Louisiana Pacific got to where we're at cooperatively with uh, Ducks Unlimited Canada's help. Wetland management <clears throat> has corporate benefits to LP. There's a social license. We cut, we are guests on Crown land and uh, public social license is important. You can have the legal right to cut trees and not get to cut any trees. There's cases of that. Uh, we have increased public trust and it's a little hard to quantify, but we do save money on roads due to better road planning. We save money on maintenance and a lot less washouts. So you have a good robust crossing that you don't have to fix time and time again. And we believe we're further ahead. So we have further to go with regards to <clears throat> management and protection of our integrated mosaic of upland and wetland ecosystems. But we're transitioning to a more holistic ecosystem-based management that includes wetlands in all aspects. So right as my talk went from the high level strategic, from inventory and planning, all the way down to the ground level operations. Opportunity knocks. So Ducks Unlimited has provided a great opportunity for all agencies in Western Canada with the what of wetland ecosystems. They've got the hierarchical classification and the tools to identify these on the ground, the field guide. And spatially, DU's provided the where. So these wetlands are mapped and spatially referenced across Western Canada. Uh, Alberta's not on here. I didn't have a picture of DU's mapping all across Western Canada, but this was just from uh, across the beginning, earlier stages across two provinces. But as you all know, Alberta has it as well. So any agency, whether you're an industry or government or a woodlot owner, you can utilize the provided watch and wear of wetlands and incorporate that into your management of the land base. So let's all avail ourselves of this great opportunity. Thank you.